Hello and welcome to this screencast. In this screencast, we're going to show how JBoss uh, Data Grid uh, can be installed as modules inside JBoss EAP and how you can use JBoss Data Grid as a simple storage instead of, for example, a database or some other NoSQL. So, the first thing you have to do if you want to replicate this demo is go to my GitHub account, tkvarnst, and into the GDG modules demo. Instead of cloning, I suggest that you actually download the whole repository as a zip. You can do that by clicking on the download zip button that GitHub has, or you can execute a command script that looks like this. After this, we unzip the package, and I also rename the top directory to something more useful. In this case, I'm going to use GDG demo. So I go into the directory, and before I run the init script, I need to make sure that I, that I need to download JBoss EAP and JBoss Data Grid EAP module zip. I already prepared that, so I'm just going to copy those into the installs directory. first EAP. I'm using EAP 6.2 and after that we're going to use the Jabos data grid. I'm using Jabos data grid beta since the EAP 6.3 is not available when this recording was made. After that we're ready to run the init script. So the init script first will install Jabos EAP 6 uh, 2 and then add an admin user and on top of that add the Ables data read modules to the EAP. Installed binaries are available in the subdirectory called target and we should now be able to start Ables EAP by executing a command that's located inside the EAP 62 bin called standalone. So everything successful, we can now move on to the next part of this demo. When the setup is done, we can move directly to the lab guide. And in the lab guide, the first thing we need to do, we can actually skip the install build the mock project, which because that's exactly what we've done so far. So we're going to move on to some additional steps, which includes building the project. So We'll change directory into projects to do. To do is the name of the project, and and then we can run Maven package Jabos AS deploy to build and deploy this to running EAP instance. The to do application is a simple. Well, it's a simple to do application that is a mock up. And we should, uh, when successfully built and deployed, we should be able to open that application. And we can see that everything's deployed correctly. So now we can open the application by going to localhost 8080 slash to do. And here you see a little to do list. and in this to-do list we have two actions and <coughs> we add uh, the actions have uh, the tasks actually this task I can make it mark as done or uh, I can create a new task but as you will notice so far this is just a mock-up project and when I press create here it doesn't actually create anything and actually my, my status change to done is also not persisted so that's the next step of the demo if you follow the lab guide you can see that the next step is actually to start changing some files but before I do that I wanted to import the project into Eclipse or actually Ables Developer Studio 
so that we can have a good IDE to change and look at the files and change the files. So when that is done, you can see we have a project with a POM build file. And that POM and we also have some Java code in here. So this is actually an Angular JS application and it using REST uh, interface in the background to communicate with the server. So the REST endpoint is called task endpoint and it consists of a couple of methods here, so called uh, create, uh, list all, and update. And they're all mapped to different post gets and put requests. As you can see, they're all using the task service. To, and task service is a CDI bean that's injected into this. So if I open the declaration of task service, I can now understand why how the mockup code looks like. And as you can see, it yes, creates a hard-coded list value, an array list actually, and returns that to me to find all, and the create and update are not even implemented. If we now go back to the light, to the lab guide, we can see that the next step the lab guide suggests is that we add some dependencies to the pom.xml. So the whole point in the exercise here is to use Jacob's data grid as the backend store for these tasks. And so therefore we gotta add some dependency. I've chosen to use the the BOM dependency that's it's provided as part of a data grid. And a BOM file is just a dependency management file that lists all the versions that we need to use, etc. So the first thing I do is to add this BOM file, the BOM dependency, and then I use Eclipse to handle the intent. And as you can see, there is a specific version in my BOM file. That means that I don't have to have version in the dependencies later on. I can trust the BOM file to specify that dependency. So we also, we in this product, we're basically going to use two dependencies. So, one is InfiniSpan Core, and the other one is InfiniSpan CDI. And as you can see, they're both listed as provided here, with scope provided. And that is because we already installed the binaries into EAP, so we don't have to have the binaries in the web in flip. Of course we can do that, but in, in this case it, it keeps our jar files or bar files actually much smaller and, and easier to handle in a, in different environments. So going back to the lab guide, you can see that step two is to make sure that we have a dependency instead on type on the build. So in order to use the 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 shipped so the, the already shipped EAP modules, we need to depend the var archive that we're going to deploy onto these modules. So we can use that. You can do that using JWAS deployment structure .xml, which is a deployment file that can specify, or we can use this. We can use the manifest.mf version uh, file inside the var archive. I'll show something to do that later, and. In that case, I just need to tell Maven how to add that because manifests are built at package time, so we need to do that. There's one issue here. If you style this one in Eclipse, you will put an enter between the two, the two entries here, which is it's, it's not how we want it. We want the, the both entries in the same row, so be careful of that. Sometimes I need to update my workspace when I edit the poem file, which is normal. And now everything should build fine. So again, we execute the Maven package here with AS deploy. And we tail the log and we see that everything is deployed successfully. But we actually haven't changed anything in the code yet. So let's go back to the code and open the <coughs> whoops and open the task service class so here we go 
So the first thing we need to do is to inject a, a, a data grid or Infinus Bank cache. Uh, Infinus Bank is the upstreams project of data grid, and that's why you also, we also call it Apos Data Grid. In this case, I can use because I imported the Infinus Bank CDI. I can use CDI to just inject a cache. This will inject the default cache. You can also use named cache with different settings, etc. So we start with this, and then we change the implementation of find all, for example. And actually, we can replace the whole implementation. And when we done that, we just need one simple line, which basically takes the values of the cache and returns them as an array list with, tasks, with tasks. And the create method is a bit more, uh, more implementation and details in it. The first thing uh, we need to do is to create a unique ID. I'm using a quite simplistic trick here. I'm just counting the number of entries and then plusing it with one. But we have to be careful Normally, I would have to handle this in a, in a transaction as well, because otherwise someone else might count the, time, the count the number of entries before I enter this one, and you will not get unique IDs. So you shouldn't use this, but th this works fine in this demo environment for the moment. I have to clean up some imports, and and then we also gonna have to create do the update method. So which basically just replaces an existing tasks. So the last thing I need to do is because the life and the cache manager, which is creating this cache object, has the defined life cycle that we need to honor, I need to also stop the cache manager before I close this object. So I can do that using the CAI pre pre-destroy method. And and then make sure that we uh, that I stop the cache manager. If I don't stop the cache manager and then try to redeploy this project, I will see some nasty exceptions in my log file stating that a uh, uh, cache manager has already been initiated. So when this is fixed, we can now save task service. And after that, all we need to do is to build and redeploy. We can do it again with maven package table stash as colon deploy. And when this commands return successfully. And log file looks good. So now if we reload this application we can see that we have an empty task list. But I can create new tasks. And now they're actually persisted into the cache. And as you can see, I can create three tasks. And if I press done on one, and even if I reload or if I create another task, my status update will still be there. So this was all for, for this time. Next time we are going to invest, investigate a bit more about this cache object that we can in insert and what we can do with it and how we can actually persist to other sources. Thank you very much.